Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we have a service call for a two pipe fan call unit. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. Today we have another service call for a two pipe fan call unit. It's a beautiful chilly day in New York City. Let's go ahead and see what's going on. Alright, alright. We have a two pipe fan call unit. This is the McQuay system. They're out of business. Daikin has bought them over. So right now the chiller is still on. So we have cold water, chilled water entering the two pipes that we have here. But today is about 40 degrees, so it's chilly and they want heat. In this case, we have electrical heaters in this system for this type of season. Right now the issue is that they just keep getting cooling and they have no heat right off the bat without even opening anything i can tell you right now that the valve the zone valve is no good if you guys look right here we have the actuator for the zone valve if you listen closely i can hear water just passing right through it so right there is the actuator you can just hear the water squeezing through and there's no power does the spring return it just springs back and closes try to listen to the water i want to close there's a little hand valve right here i want to close it just try to listen hopefully you guys can hear it it's quiet this is the way it should be but if I open up the hand valve, I hear water just squeezing right through. Sometimes you could just close the actuator and see if that holds it back. But most likely this is bad. This is not the first one in the building. Looks like they have a lot of these right here. Let's gonna pop this out. This should spring back. And it does spring all the way back. And it's tight. This looks like a new actuator. They try to change the actuator. They can't fix it. They call us. So that valve is in a very, very difficult place. It's pretty much you can't do it from here unless you cut a hole in the wall from the other side. And even then, it's going to be tight. So what I typically do is prop this open. If you look here, it says open. You can spin this back and then press it down. And like this, you just leave this valve propped open. So just water's always flowing. I'll leave that as is. Take off the wires and run a different actuator with the new valve somewhere on this line so i gotta figure out which line and i'm thinking if i can i could fit a valve right here and install it it's always tricky to do but i do have one brand new in the truck so that's definitely gonna have to be replaced but at the same time let's go ahead and check to see if the heat is even working here. All right, Chris, real quick, let's put the system in cooling. There's a relay here that lights up. I wanna know who's who so I can label it. Let's quickly check that. Right now you can see that this spring is just tight. Got one light there. And you can see this valve is slowly opening. Which is good. Let's let that fully open before we shut it down. I just want to mark who's who. So put a C over there for cooling. See how this is just wide open? When you kill the power, it's supposed to just spring back. All right, Chris, put the system on off. And it springs back. That's good. All right, let's put the system on heating. All 
it's a good indication because sometimes with these auto changeover switches, the pipe sensors, they energize both the heating and cooling at the same time. All right, so this is the heat, pipe sensors, so far seems to be doing its thing. All right, let's check. Let's check the heaters. So we got some super thick wires in here and that's gonna be for the heaters. I can see two pink, two white. So that's telling me that there's actually two heaters in here. Two heaters, amps. Put it across, all right, 7.9 amps across one, and then the next one, 7.8 amps on that one. So electrically, this is working. Electrically, this is working, but without even having to check temperature, I already know that because this valve is squeezing through, we're mixing heating and cooling, and the cooling overpowers these electrical heaters. In that case, we just need to replace that valve. So I'm gonna go with the method I told you guys, prop this on open and cut into this line. All right, it's gonna be a fun day. Excuse the noise guys, they got two absorption chillers working right now. I'm gonna use this vise to prep everything. I got a brand new zone valve. This is three quarter, this is a brass, valve two position two way so i got two pieces of copper we're gonna sand the outside of our uh, outside of our pipe and the inside of our fittings and we're also gonna deburr the inside and outside of our pipe we're gonna use 90 not 95 5 solder with soldering place paste our flux and we're gonna use map gas to torch everything up and solder this valve. Let's go ahead and prep this up. All right, so we're sanding the inside of our fittings and the outside of our pipe. We're also gonna deburr the inside and the outside of our fittings with this deburring tool. Next, we're gonna flux the inside of our valve, right? The inside of our fittings. And the outside of our pipes. I got this together and I'm gonna wipe off the excess flux. You only want that inside the fitting. All right, let's go ahead and set this up on the vise. Light it up. the next one. All right, back in the ceiling. Thinking of putting this like right here. Let me cut the insulation out.
All right, set up a garbage bag and I marked my pipe where I need to cut it. So let's go ahead, let's get this thing started. Valves are closed in the hallway. In the hallway, we have two shut off valves. We shut it down. Unfortunately, we don't have anywhere to drain. So it's always a risk cutting these, but let's go ahead and chop this up. I got a drip. Just let that leak out. It looks like it's, it's holding. see what happens all right guys looking good just got a couple of drips looks like we're safe to fully cut this out now all right let's cut this thing out all right let's go ahead and sand these pipes down all right it's nice and shiny no longer green I'm just gonna want to deburr the pipes and here I have my my valve these are two couplings these are uh, no stop couplings or slip couplings so you can slide them across the pipe and that's how we're gonna fit it i'll show you how we do that i also marked on the pipe exactly here where this needs to stop because there's no stop here to indicate for you so you can see this fits just about perfectly in here so we're gonna slide this in here You'll see, you'll be able to slide it across. That's the beauty of those fittings. Right there. So this, let's make sure the arrow right here, there's a flow. This is the supply pipe. So it's coming into the unit and then return is coming out. So let's follow the arrow. This is gonna go right up to that line. And then this one is going to go right up to that line. Let's make sure it's straight. You want to push these pipes together. All right there. We're going to use the press tool and get this thing in. All right. I'm going to push this together. Make sure that's tight. That should be good. I'm using the Milwaukee. Force Logic Press Tool M18. This thing is absolutely amazing. All right, let's fit that in. That's one. Make sure that's centered. That's two. to make sure that this pipe is pushed in closer that is together the better it's gonna be I don't want any bad connections right there okay Push that in right there. It's one. Try to push that pipe in. It's in there good. And that's how it's done, boys. Guys, the valve is open. You can hear the water flowing. 
That's a beautiful thing, man. This looks great. And we got no leaks at all. Let's go ahead and insulate this pipe. All right, so I put two pieces of fiberglass insulation. And as far as the valve, we can even use this right here. This is cork tape. It says stop sweating and condensation for hot or cold applications. Self-adhesive, easy to apply. Use on iron pipe, copper tubing, tees, valves, and fittings. So I'm gonna wrap that around the bottom of the valve and then tape everything up and make it look nice. All right, so that's what it looks like. I left the top a bit free because we need to get the valve on there. Excuse me, the actuator. So let's go ahead and tape that up, make it look nice. All right, there you have it. It's in there, nicely wrapped. All right, if you guys can see, we got 92.1 degrees. And that's pretty much what these units put out as far as electric heat. So this one's doing pretty good. Some of them is honestly, all you can get is about 85 degrees as somehow they undersize these things and some of the valves are leaking by, but this one's doing pretty good and I call it a success. All right, so we're gonna wrap this one up here. I put some tape across the unit and that's just because there's some air gaps where I don't want this thing pulling in dirt through the coil. But anyways, we're all done here. Everything is working. And if anyone found this video interesting or helpful, Please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. And I'll catch you all next time.